Today, I'm going over everything that's wrong with competitive Fortnite. The goal of this video is to just spread some awareness to what this game can potentially be, and really how many possibilities of Fortnite let go of just because they don't put in an average amount of effort into their competitive scene. The first thing that's massively wrong with competitive is how Fortnite doesn't give anything back to organizations. Now, the reason this is such an issue is because if they did, 10 times as many people could have made a living off the game. Now, you might be thinking, well, man, of course they shouldn't give anything to organizations. Epic would just lose their money. Here's the thing, if Fortnite was willing to give back some of the money they make through, for example, org skins, where every organization competing at the highest level would have had a skin collection where they would get a small percent of sales, orgs would have been able to invest way more into creating content and storylines for their competitive players, as well as paying a higher salary on average. This would again result in more passion, seriousness, and ice on eSport. The more ice a competitive game has on it, the easier it is to sell events to partners. Now, of course, Epic has massive casual partners like Marvel, DC, and Star Wars, but what annoys me so much is how little it would take to exponentially improve the numbers of the comp scene and make Fortnite one of the most watched and hyped esports titles in the world. Additionally, it's being so hard to make money from just tournaments and orgs alone means that we won't get a player base who really gets to their true potential skill cap. I don't know about you, but when I'm watching an esports or a sport for that matter, I want to see players competing at their true potential. Nowadays, it's incredibly tough to dedicate your time to performing in tournaments alone, just because of how orgs aren't able to invest a lot of money into upcoming players because the rewards for them simply aren't there right now. With just a few tweaks, I think the entire comp side of the game could have been way more sustainable and given way more opportunities to a lot of people who want to try and pursue professional Fortnite. Next up, we need to have a serious conversation about ranked, because a lot of players who are new to competitive might think that grinding ranked day in and day out is what will make them really good at the game. Of course, ranked has its benefits. There's skill-based matchmaking, and as you climb the ranks, you will face better and better players. But the problem with ranked is that for the players who are really good, getting to Unreal is sadly not a challenge at all. One strategy to make ranked better would have been adding an additional rank above Unreal that only a set amount of players could ever reach, like top 500 in your region for instance. And the players within and around the top 500 would of course change depending on how good everyone plays in a given season. This would make it so that you almost always have something to grind for. Epic are seriously lazy when it comes to comp. They have attempted adding two ranked modes to the game, Arena and Ranked, and it seems as though they've given up on trying to better their competitive system. Obviously, as you get more and more into comp, you start playing customs, and this is very good for improvement. What I don't like about it, however, is that it is so hard for aspiring players to get to play against other good players. They have to understand how the customs work in the region, and then adapting their schedule to the Discord service hosting schedule. We will see if Epic ever decides to make a ranked mode that is actually good as time passes. But how it's looking right now, the chances are slim. Cheating has become more and more of a problem the last few years, and doing something about it is unfortunately quite hard. During this season of Fortnite OG, the tournaments have been open, meaning accounts playing with cheats have been allowed to just run around full on aimbotting everyone without needing a specific rank in ranked. But one thing is cheaters who go around full on aimbotting, obviously using wall axe and just not caring. But on the other side, we have players who cheat and never get caught. Sadly in Fortnite, there are some players who have the right connections and can cheat without ever getting banned. Now there are multiple ways of doing this. Naturally, I am not going to expose exactly how that is done in today's video, but really high up on the PR leaderboards, there are players who 100% are and have been cheating for a long time. You could make the argument that it doesn't really matter because these players won't be able to cheat at lands and that's where all the money is anyways and you would kind of be right in saying that but it's still super annoying having people run around griefing players who genuinely deserves to succeed but maybe just miss out on qualifying or earning because of a cheater thankfully going into chapter 5 there's no way they keep tournaments open to everyone so the cheating problem will already there be limited to a pretty big extent moving on i actually need to give epic a lot of credit for how the servers felt in ranked or opens tournaments this season it felt better than ever before but that is still not to say that stacked endgames are not laggy, because they are. Of course, as you all know, getting better servers in 2023 is simply not possible. Epic has the best servers money can buy, but the game is still laggy when there's a ton of players in the moving zones. Sadly, I don't think Epic cares at all about this issue, and it would likely be like this forever. What I hope will not stay like it is forever is the prize pools. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't think the victory cash cups are bad at all, and a lot of money is given out, which is fantastic. It gives young players a relatively easy opportunity to make some cash, which I'm all for. But what I miss is more structured tournaments with better prize pools. Top 100 quals to solo CC round 2 with a decent prize pool in finals, or even better, dual tournaments with 500 teams qualifying and then top 50 teams makes money. I might think a little bit differently than most when it comes to prize pools, but all I know is that it would be refreshing with something else than victory cups moving forward. A big debate in the competitive community is whether or not we should have a fully separate loot pool to casual. What I think is that Fortnite needs to get better at just knowing what items don't work 
competitive before adding them. And what's also been super annoying the last few seasons has been that they have had a different loot pool in ranked and tournaments. I don't know if you guys remember the sticky grenade launcher, but having that in ranked just seemed so weird. I personally like the fact that the meta changes from season to season, but I'd prefer it if OP items would be excluded from tournaments, as it very much seems as though cups become less skillful with these OP items. Then again, you could make the argument that everyone is playing the same game with the same items, and that would be fair. You're 100% right. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Do you think we should have a fully 100% separate competitive loot pool? Another thing that is quite frustrating about Fortnite is how bad it runs on a stock PC. Meaning, if you buy a PC today and you boot up the game, your performance will be way worse than it can potentially be. Applying settings like XMP, putting on the right NVIDIA 3D settings, and considering overclocking your CPU can make your game feel 10 times better and as a result make it easier to perform. For new players that are seen, knowing exactly what tweaks to make can be extremely difficult, causing comp to be a slightly uneven playing field for that reason. Hopefully as time progresses, the game can become more and more optimized to the point where doing all of these tweaks won't be necessary. For everyone that enters the comp community, you also need to be prepared for quite a lot of toxicity. Now, I don't necessarily think a little bit of toxicity is a terrible thing, but in the dark corners of this community, things can get pretty rough, so just a heads up to all of you watching that you need to be prepared. Your circumstances can make your goals five times easier to reach. And as you all know, Fortnite is one of the most ping-dependent games ever released. I'm honestly a little sad about the fact that ping matters as much as it does, because some talents never get their opportunity to really shine because of their terrible ping situation. Of course, there are things you can do to make your ping slightly better, like using the right DNS server, having a solid ethernet cable, and even considering using third-party apps. But location will, at the end of the day, be the main factor behind how high or low your ping is. If you had good RNG and spawned in, say, Germany, your odds of succeeding in competitive Fortnite will be 100 times higher compared to if you live in a country with super bad internet and high ping. How the competitive part of Fortnite communicates is also a massive problem. Now, the main issue with their communication is how they, without giving any heads up, does massive updates the day before huge events like FNCS qualifiers or even FNCS finals. I'm granted a meta for weeks on end just for it to be fully changed the day before the tournament you put in all the work for makes grinding this game sometimes feel a little pointless. In my opinion, the people who work really hard in the upcoming weeks until a specific tournament they want to do well in, like FNCS or even Cash Cups, should be rewarded for the hours put in. And when Epic decides to make these impulsive changes on the day before tournaments, they almost disrespect the people who have invested time into their game. Now, I obviously don't think that Epic knows that they're doing these updates the day before tournaments most of the time, because the reality is that the comp scene is only a very small portion of Fortnite's player base. But I'd still just love to see some support for the people who are consistently on every day trying to get to the top. And at least not just mess them over by changing the entire meta a day before an important tourney. In this season of Fortnite OG, there's also been a lot of problems with the tournaments that have been hosted. And it's taking a billion dollar company hours to put out a tweet saying that they're either cancelling a cup, rescheduling, or just simply working on a fix is nothing short of embarrassing. I sincerely hope that in the coming years, Fortnite will be able to have a more professional team that focuses on getting information out quickly and not leaving their players without any info regarding a tournament for a super long period of time, the few times that something actually doesn't work. Playing solo tournaments is for many the best way to prove that you're a good player, but sadly in Fortnite, it is very hard to prove yourself just by performing in solos. Of course, you have the Victory Cups where you can win a few hundred bucks a season and you'll probably be looked at as an up-and-coming player. However, what I would absolutely love to see would have been some bigger solo tournaments, with respectable prize pools for everyone who deserves an opportunity to prove themselves. Finding a duo who's at your skill level in 2023 is remarkably hard, so a major solo tournament, although maybe not as fun as duos, would have been the potential start of a lot of future talents' careers. I also do need to note that I understand why Epic hasn't had a major solo tournament in a while, as solo tournaments always lead to a lot of teaming, which is a problem that is very hard for Fortnite to fix. I'm not entirely sure how it would be possible to run a major solo tournament without any teaming or pre-planned rotates and surge routes, but all I know is that I would have absolutely loved to see it, and I think it's time if we give some solo demons their opportunity to shine again. On a side matter, I also think Fortnite Tracker needs to start giving more PR out to the solo events that are currently in the game. They did add PR for finals now of the Victory Cups, even when you don't win games, but I think the PR multiplier needs to be turned up for opens as well, because some players just won't be able to consistently over time perform in duos because of how hard it is to find an actual solid duo if you don't have a decent amount of PR. Elo glitching is also something I'm not really the biggest fan of in tournaments. Elo glitching is essentially putting yourself in worse lobbies than you should be in using a very specific strategy. If you do this correctly, it means that even though you're in the top of 100 on the leaderboards, you will be able to play against players with zero points and you'll of course 
course, be able to way easier get points in a zero points lobby compared to a top 100 lobby filled with only great players. Over the course of the last six years, Fortnite has been out. Yellow glitching has almost always been a thing that some players have been able to do and make some pretty good money off of. Yellow glitching isn't as big anymore as it was back in the day, but I'd love to see that it gets completely patched in the future. Alrighty guys, there you have it. Some of the sad truths about competitive Fortnite. If I missed anything, don't hesitate to drop it in the comments below. Just letting you know, by the way, I am on Snapchat and I post a lot of what I do in a day over there. I'll drop the QR code right now so you can add me or you can just add the username Marin the Fisher. Thank you guys so much for all that I've recently. I appreciate you all so much. With that said, I will talk to you all very, very soon.